Over the last few weeks, we've looked at um, different attitudes that we need to have to be happy. Uh, and Jesus has taught us that it's really important for us to get these attitudes right if we're going to live the abundant life that he's called us to. Uh, let me read to you today the fourth attitude that Jesus gives to us uh, for happy living, and then we'll, we'll recap a little bit and we'll go right into today's message. The verse is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Let me read it to you. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Let me say it again. Blessed are those, or happy are those, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now, today's um, attitude is a little more positive than the first three. The first three kind of had a negative content. They had a cost. Um, implied with the change that we needed to make so that we could live a happy life. The first is that uh, we learned that we're to be poor in spirit. And so in poverty of spirit, we turn away from self-seeking. Uh, um, and so there's a, a cost that goes with that, which really we have to die to self. If we want to be happy, Jesus says we have to die to ourselves that Christ may live in us. The second was, is that in mourning, we turn away from self-satisfaction. We turn away from self-seeking and poverty of spirit. In mourning, we turn away from self-satisfaction, meaning that we find our satisfaction not in ourself and not in the pleasures of this world, but in Jesus Christ alone. And the, the cost of that means that we have to face our sinfulness. Last week, we talked about being meek. And in meekness, we turn away from self-serving. Uh, there's a cost um, in that as well, and that is in surrendering our power to God's control. And so in the first three, there was um, a plan that God has for us to live happy lives, but it required us uh, to uh, give up our self in, in seeking our own identity, our own uh, purposes, but in trusting God for that. Uh, also in self-satisfaction, where we um, are living our own life the way we want to live it rather than the way that God wants us to live. And then in self-serving where we, we serve our own needs rather than have God be the source uh, of our reward. When we look at this fourth beatitude, the hunger and thirst for righteousness, um, we're actually moving to something more positive. Here, um, our desires and the things we go after will produce for us the happiness and the reward that we, that we really seek. So the more we put uh, aside self, sins, and, and power and turn to the Lord, we are given then a great desire for righteousness. And notice that this beatitude is predicated on the first three. Uh, and then the more we put away what we have, uh, the more and the more we long for what God has. Let me say it again, the more we put away what we have, the more we long for what God has. And then um, there's a, if you will, a way to kind of judge where we are in our walk with the Lord and how well we've done the first three steps is in how much we desire uh, the righteousness of God. If we lack desire, most likely we have neglected these first three. And so if you're, if you're a Christian and, and you believe in Jesus, but you don't have really a desire to live the way that Jesus lived, you don't have a desire to uh, be like Jesus in the way that he loved, in the way that he gave, in the way that he served, if, if that's not something you have a hunger and thirst for, um, I, I want to suggest to you to go back to the beginning and see if, if there isn't some work that needs to happen uh, in regard to self. There's a quote by a, a theologian, uh, and uh, his name is Martin Lloyd-Jones, and, and he says it this way, the person who has no hunger and thirst for righteousness has no part of the kingdom of God. Wow. The true believer desires to obey even though he struggles with the unredeemed flesh. Um, Paul gives us the example of that in Romans chapter 8, verse 23 where he says, I want to do the right thing, but my flesh doesn't want to do the right thing. And so uh, there should be a desire within us. If we're part of the kingdom of God, there should be a desire uh, for righteousness. Uh, so what is Jesus teaching here? What is he saying um, in regard to this, this attitude or this way of living? 
Uh, the first thing he says is that happiness comes only through righteousness. If you want that soul satisfying happiness, that internal work uh, that satisfies that, that longing and yearning each of us have that we're all seeking, uh, then you have to live or desire a, to live a righteous life. It says we must hunger and thirst for righteousness. Um, no, we are not meant to hunger and thirst after experience or blessing. Uh, we can never uh, put blessing or happiness or experience above our thirst for righteousness. Uh, a lot of times we're, we're not very successful in our, in our Christian life, in our spiritual change, because our priorities are out of whack. Jesus tells us that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. There's a, there's a priority here that matters. You have to do the first things uh, so that the second things and third things can take place in our life. Uh, he says, then these things will be added to your life. When we seek first the kingdom, uh, we're going to have these other blessings, but we're not to seek the blessing. We're going to have these experiences uh, that are, are memorable and life-changing, but we're not seeking the experience, but rather uh, we're going to seek first the kingdom and the righteousness of Christ, and then those things will be added to us. Uh, they, are the, they are the result or the consequence of our righteousness. Uh, that's found in Matthew chapter 6, 33. The Apostle John warns us not to love the world. He says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father and is from the world. In other words, all of the things that um, keep us from living this happy life or living this, having this deep spiritual satisfaction in our life uh, is when our focus, our love is for the world. Uh, instead, we're to look to the Father and he says, and the world is passing away with all of its lusts, but the one who does the will of God abides forever. That's in 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17. It's really important, I think, that we understand uh, that when we live this life uh, that Jesus gives us, we're going to have something that abides, not only in the next few minutes, but something that abides uh, for all of eternity. And so if we put our focus in the temporal, we'll miss the big picture that God has a plan and purpose for us for all of eternity. John MacArthur, uh, another um, theologian and pastor, uh, gives us these words. He says, those who belong to the king hungers and thirst for the king's righteousness. They desire sin to be replaced with virtue and disobedience with obedience. They are eager to serve the Word and the will of God. Uh, it's important that if we love the King, if we're part of His kingdom, that we're eager to serve the Word, meaning that all of the commands of Christ. Jesus says, um, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. And the will of the Father is that we would live a full and prosperous life. And that's found in Jesus Christ. Jesus is also uh, speaking to us about a perfect righteousness. It's complete, uh, it is all-consuming, and it is divine. And uh, we often lose meaning as we translate from Greek to English, and the Bible's written in Greek, and in this passage, we, we miss something uh, in the translation. Uh, normally, um, in the Greek, if you're partaking, if you're hungry or you're thirsty, you're saying, I would like a portion of food, and I would like a portion of water. The French language gives us this ability to distinguish whether we want it all or we want part of it. And the Greek language does the same thing. And in here, um, they're not using the normal conventions. If we were to say, I'm hungry, we wouldn't say that we're hungry for all of the food in the world, uh, or we're thirsty for all of the water in the world it would distinguish that we want a portion of it. Uh, but here, uh, the, con the, the grammar is such that Jesus is saying that we should hunger and thirst for all righteousness, uh, not a portion of it, not to be a little bit holy, not to be a little bit like Jesus, not to have a portion of the living water, but to have all of it, that we want everything that God has. 
and, and what we're um, seeking here then is Christ himself. Uh, he is the one who is going to satisfy that. You know, it's hard uh, to think about being like Jesus, and often when we read about him and we think about him, uh, we recognize uh, that our flesh, that we're always going to fall short. But here, what, what is being spoken is Jesus is saying to us that we can have the righteousness of God dwell within us as the Spirit of God lives in us. Um, Paul says it this way in his letter to the church in, in Corinth. He says, what we are seeking is Christ Jesus himself. He has become our wisdom. He has become our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Everything that we need to live the happy life is given to us at our salvation as Christ comes and lives within us. We don't get a part of Jesus. We don't get a, a piece of his righteousness or a piece of his holiness or a part of his wisdom or, or we're not partially redeemed, but rather we receive all of it. And the thing that we're hungering and thirsting for is all of Jesus. We want to know him. Paul says, I want to know him in every aspect of who he is. I want to know him in his sufferings, he even says. I want to be like Jesus. And that is what will bring happiness to your life. It also will keep you out of trouble. The more you focus on the right things, the less time you have to do the wrong things. Um, we're not to settle for a taste of Jesus' righteousness. No, we're to want it all. And I, I think that's where we get into trouble um, uh, as American Christians. Part of my concern is, is that we settle, far, um, we settle for far too less or far too little of what God really has for us. I've really been concerned about that because I think sometimes we settle for religion and we settle for uh, you know, behaviors that are consistent with Christianity. But in our heart, God sees the wickedness that's there. And we're not hungering and we're not thirsting. We don't want it all. We just want enough to get by. Uh, my grandma used to say that uh, she wanted to get to heaven by the skin of her teeth, meaning she wanted to do as little as possible to get to heaven. I think that's just the wrong uh, perception and the wrong reality. We should love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our mind and all of our strength. Everything that is about Jesus and who he is, we should covet and want for ourselves. And to have that though, you have to become desperate. Uh, when he talks about hunger and thirsting, um, as Americans, sometimes we really struggle to understand what it means to be hungry. Usually that means we, we haven't eaten in a little while. So from breakfast to lunch, by lunchtime we're hungry or that we haven't had that third bottle of water in the morning, and so we become a little thirsty. But Jesus is speaking to a group of people who really understand what hunger was. Uh, they lived in an arid place, and they understood what it meant to go thirsty, uh, to become so thirsty that they weren't sure that they would survive, uh, to become so thirsty that maybe their tongues would swell up and their mouth uh, uh, would, would change its shape even because of the thirst that's in their body. And many people died uh, from hunger and died from thirst. And so when he speaks these words, they understand the desperation of it. Uh, we have to have that same kind of desperation for God. Uh, we sing this song, I'm desperate for you, but are we really? Um, is God just one of the things in our life or he, is he the sole thing in our life and everything else is added upon that? I wanna encourage you, uh, if you lack happiness and you lack spiritual happiness in your life, I wanna encourage you that maybe it's because you're not desperate enough. Um, you're, you're satisfying your hunger and your thirst from the things the world has, rather than giving yourself completely to the Lord. That makes all of the difference. Jesus says that if we seek him, we'll find him. Uh, when we're desperate for God, there is a promise that he's not gonna hide himself from us but he is the one that's going to satisfy that thirst and that hunger. Uh, he says, if we seek him, we'll find him. And Jesus and his righteousness uh, is the thing that's gonna satisfy our souls. It is the thing that Jesus is really talking about here. Christianity and religion and even coming to TLC, as great as TLC is, is not gonna be enough. Uh, it is not going to be enough to get to heaven, and it's not going to be enough to, to give you that soul satisfaction that you so long for. 
Remember when Jesus was um, on his way uh, to Jerusalem and he said, I must go through Samaria. And it's there that as he's sitting by the well, uh, a woman comes to draw water. And Jesus says to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. He goes on to say, everyone who drinks of this well will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water I give him will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I give him will become a wellspring of water welling up to eternal life. I, I think it's important for us to understand that Jesus is talking about being that living water himself, that he wants to give the gift of his presence in every circumstance of our life. And the more that we know him and the we, nor, more that we know his will and the more that we live it out, the more powerful our life is going to be. Jesus says that he has water that will satisfy the yearning of your soul. That pursuit of happiness that we're always chasing, Jesus says that if you look to me, you'll never run out of supply. It is welling up within you. The more that you spend time in his word, the more you spend time in prayer, the more you spend time in worship, the more you spend time in meditation and thinking about who Jesus is and what he wants for your life, the more that you give honor and praise to him, the more your life is going to be complete. And Jesus also said to his disciples who witnessed the multiplication of the loaves uh, in Galilee, he said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry, and who believes in me will never be thirsty. Uh, Jesus had just performed this great miracle in multiplying the loaves, but he's saying more important than the food that I've given you today to eat is that my presence, that if you hunger for me, if you thirst for me, I will satisfy your soul and the longing of your life. Uh, I want to encourage you uh, to think about this. Where is your affection? Uh, what are the things you think about? What are your desires? Are you passionate enough to, to discover more about it? Uh, I've been, become really interested in a, uh, a few things during the pandemic. Uh, there's different kinds of literature that I'm enjoying reading and I'm studying all about uh, different topics. Uh, I love to uh, look at uh, videos. I've uh, started to begin to work out a little bit and to study the videos and learn about the musculature and all these different things. And I can, I can spend hours because I'm passionate about it and, I, and because I want to see a different result. I want to see a change. But let me ask you the question, how by your own behaviors would you rate your desperation for Jesus? And when is the last time you really spent time with Him? Uh, when is the last time you prayed? Uh, how diligently do you search the scriptures to know more about who he is? Uh, would you be able to say like Paul says, I want to know him. Here's the truth. We're going to spend a little bit of time on this earth and it's going to pass away. And all the things that we enjoyed and all the things that we treasured here on earth are, are, are going to be gone. But all of the things uh, that we did in relationship uh, to growing in the knowledge of who Jesus is, into uh, giving our heart and mind to Him is going to be rewarded for all of eternity. And we're actually going to be in the presence of Jesus every day. He's going to be the sunshine over the city we live in. And so let me ask you the question, are you hungry and thirsty for that? Or do you spend your whole life pursuing other interests, hoping to find pleasure and joy, hoping to keep happiness alive uh, the best you can in this world? Or are you really seeking Jesus? He is the, the great reward. And I want to encourage you um, in this time, in this season, don't put your focus in trying to find pleasure in all of the things of this world, but rather turn your eyes to Jesus, look to Him, let Him bring uh, reward to your life. Let Him uh, fill you with His presence. So here's the promise. Jesus says if you hunger and thirst for Him, He'll fill you. Uh, do you want to be full of Jesus? Uh, if so, you have to go back to number one and you have to empty yourself of all of yourself. You have to ask for God to help you to overcome our tendency to do the wrong thing and we need to mourn over our sinfulness. And we need to come to that place of understanding 
uh, that, that God is really going to help us to live a life where the power we have is from Him, but it's under His control. And the things that He gives us to do, we do appropriately and live that way. And in those things, we become more like Jesus, living a righteous and holy life. Peter tells us that no one will see God if we're not holy. And so I want to be holy, I want to be righteous, and I want to have the righteousness of Christ in my life. He's the one that's going to commend me for eternal life. He's the one that's going to give me my reward. And so it's Him that I seek. Let me encourage you with this prayer. Father, we're so grateful for your love and mercy to us. We're grateful that you have a plan and purpose for our life. And it's, it's a plan that we would live an exceptional life, that we would be separated out for blessing, that we would be separated out for soul satisfying happiness. And so God, let us take these four attitudes and let us put them into practice, God. Uh, remove the sin from our life. Remove the pride and the arrogance. Remove the lack of self-control. Uh, and Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your presence, that you would fill us with uh, Jesus himself, that we would have that abiding presence in us, that we would live for you all of our days, that we would live according to your commands and your precepts, that we would live according to the life of love, that we would make a difference in the world around us, that we would understand that we're just aliens and strangers in this land. Our real home is with you and that we long to be with you in our day to day, in our actions and in our words. We give you all the praise in Jesus name. May God continue to bless you and help you. Uh, in his name we pray, amen.